Uh, good evening, folks. Dr. Freedom Every Times from Dr. News, News from Minute Around the Hooniverse. That is so incredible, so amazing, so spectacular that spontaneous rays of sunshine will just begin spouting out your ears, your eyes, your mouth, and maybe it'll melt the snow and make it freaking warm here again. Okay, but oh, sorry, I got a, I got a bit of a stiff neck. You see, you know, yeah, you know, I've been dealing with that certain issue. You know, if you folks have been watching, and you know, as I said, it's kind of difficult when you're in the bathroom and suddenly, boom, there's Claire Oswald in there. You know, well, I was in the shower and I was just being genuinely. You know, I figure we'll bury the hatchet. I invited her to come in with me, and you know, wife overheard and judo shot me in the neck. So. Let's just say the only thing that's been stiff on me for the rest of the day has been my neck. But more excitingly, yeah, more ex no, exciting enough to give me whiplash is we've gotten some pictures up from Cape Town, South Africa. So let's go to those right now, shall we? Let's go to the videotape, shall we? All right, moving on. And ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, now what it looks like is going on here is we've obviously got what's going on is – it looks like it's the fifties in America. Um, and you can tell by the various vehicles and wake up because you know, boom, these are American cars. Um, you see they're moving some of them in the place and whatnot for shooting. Very, very interesting stuff here going on. All right, moving on, moving on. Hang on a second. All right. I was messing around with the buttons and you see what happens. Okay. I wanted to mess with Clara's buttons, but she's a ghost. All right, moving on. Uh, so, and the wife was unappreciative. All right, here we go. Let's keep moving. Nifty stuff right here. Oh, look. <laughs> it kind of makes me think we're back in Mayberry. That's right. Hey, Andy, there's this weird looking woman around calling herself Clara. She's, you know, like, she's like, well, you know, want to know what's up with the jail. Should I shoot her with my butt? No, I'm not. No. Okay, and here we go to the nitty gritty. Of course, there's Jody. Not sure that, you know, some folks are saying that may be Bradley Walsh, but we can't, I can't really tell for sure. And there's been a lot of folks jumping up and down going, it's spoilers. These pictures are spoilers. You're ruining the episode. I'm like, yeah, it's, I can tell right now the entire plot for this series. It, it's a group of 50s cars have come back from the past to kill the doctor by running her over like Christine. Uh, so, and then... They keep focusing on this individual back here in some of the photos. I have no idea who that is right now, you know, from a distance. So I don't want to positively identify anybody until we get something a little clearer. Okay, here's another boom, boom, boom. Some more stuff. And see, this is the only hour they try to zoom in on this person there, and I can't tell for sure who it is. So wham, 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 a little bit more on the car. Okay, this is the Kimberly Hotel, identified by girly letters over on Twitter. Also, thank Apple Tart, who put some of these photos up on Facebook, along with some other folks. Who, uh, so there was a lounge down there also was putting these up on Twitter of shots, you know, from the, from the set. So thank, thank those guys. They must all be evil DWSR stalkers in Cape Town, South Africa. So, so this is, yeah, the Kimberly Hotel while it's being set up. Okay, here we go. Now, what he wanted to bring attention to here, and this was from Space Jody, is that this appears to be Mandeep Gill as Yasmin standing behind the doctor here, who's obviously reaching for a firearm. Oops, I mean sonic screwdriver. So, it, 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 and you no, know, the reason why we can you know, take a guess at either the 50s and all that, and it's America, is because even during apartheid, hang on, let's move forward a little bit, they didn't have signs like this. We cater to white trade only. And only in America, sadly, during that time period, could you find this kind of segregation going on with this, well, this particular type of sign, usually. So we have to guess that this is the America in the 50s, and that's all we have for now. So don't go going crazy. Go, Dr. Freedom, you've ruined the entire season. No, we haven't, because that's all we got, okay, is a bunch of pictures. We don't know any dialogue. We don't know what the plot is. Like I said, as far as we're concerned, if you judge it by the pictures, it's a bunch of cars from the 50s have come back to kill the doctor like Christine. Ugh. Which would have been interesting having a 58 Plymouth Fury show up, wouldn't it? All right, so 
All right, let's get on to the rest of the news. Bunch of nifty stuff, of course, because of the Doctor Who magazine thing coming out. Now, this article I picked from because they get a little bit cheeky in this one. All right, now this was put up by the Sunday Express, and if you go down to here, wait. Okay, the BBC hasn't yet confirmed an air date for the new season, so they're honest on that bit right there. Because, all right, now more former showrunner Moffat and the broadcaster said it would be in autumn 2018, and like I said, that could be anywhere within the span of three months. Now, season 11 is going to be shorter, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, we know because they're just doing 10 episodes rather than the 12 or 13 you know, seasons as you know, previously aired. Now, the format change will see each episode, of course, extended by five minutes to 50-minute installments. Now, remember, keep in mind, we've seen that one thing from the Toy Exchange saying that we're promised 11 hours or more of new programming. So let's just assume for now that there's going to be a Christmas special. I don't think they're going to be dumb enough to lose that slot especially given the fact that, you know, even though people are going Christmas specials all suck, you know, they've actually been bringing attention to the show and it is an anticipated yearly event still. So, okay. And of course, here's one of my favorite bits. Fans attacked the BBC in 2013. They did really after they were promised the most Doctor Who episodes ever to mark the show's 50th anniversary. In fact, only 11 episodes aired eight from the previous year's season an anniversary special and the usual you know, festive edition. If you, yeah, it was the eighth anniversary special. All right, so, and we won't go into that now because I could be on that all day. But, <laughs> yeah, remember that back in 2013? I got a clever idea. We'll take the first five episodes of The Ponds. We'll air them in the fall. We'll take the rest of the series and smack it back into next year. So that way we can claim you got something more to watch other than just the, uh, the 50th anniversary special, of course, and all that. So, you know, what came shortly after. So it just amazes me that, you know, they got away with that nonsense. It was basically, you know, Moffat and Gango, you know, Moffat go take a year off and do the convention circuit. Ugh. Okay. So what will happen in season 11? Da, 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 da. Okay. There is no other job in the world. Or, or, there is no other job in the world like this, where you can see many, so many different worlds, meet such amazing characters and speak such extraordinary dialogue. Jodie Whittaker, of course, said the actors continue when it's all put together in one series. I hope it will blow the audience's mind as much as it blows mine. When I read each new script, it's never going to feel like other jobs because it's this job and it's amazing. It's a world away from any part I've played before. Um, now Chibnall hopped in and he said, quote, what the BBC was after was risk and boldness, he told the Royal Television Society's members-only television magazine. I had ideas about what I wanted to do with it. When I went to them and said, this is what I would do, I actually expected them to say, ooh, let's talk about that. But they said, great. Now, Chibnall, of course, said that he resisted signing up to do Doctor Who for a very long time. I finally said yes because I love the show to my bones. Um, now, James Strong, one of the Chibs' free collaborators, has hinted that the sci-fi favorite could be in for a radical revamp under its new master. Um, and what he goes into here is like he's talking about they're going to make it one usual overlong story and things like that. And so, mm, so who knows? And they go into that a little bit now, you know, right here and all that. So that's why I threw this one on because it covers a lot of different areas. It, it does quote some stuff we've already read before, but. I like the fact they got on to the fact that, yeah, there was some shitty business going on back in 2013. There really was. I don't know how the hell they got away with, oh, look, here's a 75-minute special. That's your 50th anniversary special, and it's feature length. Oh, I think. Now, Jody Whitaker says she hopes her doctoral series will blow audiences mind. Now, what, the reason why I put this up here is because even though we just covered this first part, if you scroll down here just past the picture, they go into a little bit more of what also she said to Dr. Magazine. It says, is life different? I'm not yet the doctor. And remember, this interview took place before Christmas, okay? So it's not a freak out thing. It's, you know, this is when that interview happened. So I suppose all the ex that excitement and craziness kicks in at Christmas when the handover happens. Now, at this moment in time, my life outside the job is essentially the same. I'm filming all day and going home at night. Now, the, the world of doctor is now the job I'm on. So that's very new, but all the external things that come with playing the doctor haven't really kicked in yet. So it's been kind of a nice slow burn. So boom, boom, boom. So that's why I included this article, even though we covered part of it, because they threw a little bit more in there for you for what she said to Doctor Who Magazine. All right, here we go. Whitaker secretly filmed her Doctor Who regeneration scene as soon as her casting was announced. Ain't that cool? 
get ready like this quote as soon as they made the announcement i was in the studio whitaker revealed in the latest edition of dr magazine i think the announcement happened so they could get me to the tardis set to do the regen without it being leaked if i'd been seen in cardiff being taken to rothlock it would have been very obvious that i was playing the part so they announced it the day before now by the time of filming whitaker had already spent plenty of time working on her new character with the the chibs and so she, she previously worked with of course on Broadchurch. The regen wasn't the first time Chris had seen me play the doctor. I mean, it was the first time he'd seen me as the doctor in costume on the set, but we'd rehearsed. And before that, I'd been through months of a few months of auditions. So Chris's main note was to trust my instincts. They've been right so far, and they've got you here today. Just remember that. There's been a, there's been a lot. Not, or there's not a lot of prep. Okay. Now, and despite the importance of the regen scene, Whitaker says she didn't actually do that much preparation beforehand, mainly because she only had a tiny little bit of the script to work with. She goes, there's not a lot of prep you can do for that. I didn't read the rest of the episode because I was only given a page to go from, which was the moment I became the doctor. In a way, I had one of the easiest jobs because all the hard work had been done by Rachel, the art department, and the rest of the crew. And she goes in a little bit of that more down here. Okay. So, boom, 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 here we go. Chib reveals Stephen Moffat's warning when he was first offered the job. And he goes into that a bit right here, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry, I'm about to derail your life. <laughs> now, you're probably either excited or worried about the future, maybe both. If it's any consolation, that combination of excitement and concern is also the natural state of making the show excited about what you're planning, concerned how you'll achieve it. And then it goes a little bit more into it right here. So right there, you know, so you're walking up to, by the way, I'm about to derail your entire life and send you squirreling off into the fan abyss. Oh, okay. Now, this, of course, is about the new director for Series 2 filming, and this is going in about, I believe, Mark Tondere. And this is, of course, the guy who's directing things down in South Africa. And I'm trying to concentrate and not say South America like I did at one time. Okay, so South Africa. And if you may want to focus on this Twitter account right here also, Ruther2. Because Ruther2 has been putting up a lot of nifty, you know, casting announcement and all that for like, and I didn't see any major characters announced, at least not the one that we know of yet. But once again, if you don't want to be spoiled, watch who you follow on Twitter and stuff. So, and of course, I think the next one's going to be Sally Abraham's going to be filming Block 3. So, now the thing is, is this. Now, a lot of people, who the hell is this guy? Mark Tondere. Uh, he's done like Gotham, Lucifer, The Five, things like that. So, this is, you know, a guy who's not, you know, a, a stranger to television. Okay, Matt Smith says, Jody Whitaker will bring heart and humor to Doctor Who. And this was from his appearance on the late show with James Corden. Uh, She's amazing. She has such heart, humor, and soul. I think that show works best when it's about big, bold casting and big, bold, creative choices. And then he added, it's, about kind, of, it's kind of about time, isn't it? Uh, you know, he added calling her number, number, number 13, but then taking us into a gray area. He goes, Jody is 14. If you count John Hurt's War Doctor with Matt quickly correcting himself, no, it's number 14. She is the right choice. I am fully behind jody and there's some really nifty video clips of this appearance on the late show with james corden and of course that's tyra banks here. be sure to go look these up some of them were funny as freaking hell especially the smize bit all right now if you haven't watched them yet or haven't seen them anywhere else before somebody is, i believe it's bbc america has uploaded all the series 10 deleted scenes so if you haven't seen them before and all that all you got to do is click. Sometimes I'll just click on it. Then I click the YouTube thing that way and get away from the article and the ads. So here you go. Series 10, the full deleted scenes are all compiled right here into this one video. And I suggest you watch them because there was a lot of really nifty shit that they left out. Um, such as the doctor did tell Pearl, you know, Bill Potts, I mean, about his little adventure with Stevie Wonder, River Song and all that. And it, you know, like that, she goes, wait a minute, you're married? He goes, yes, of course, all the great good ones are taken up. Oh. All right, Jodie Whittaker reveals how she helped design her costume. And she goes into this right here and whatnot and talks about how they came up with certain things. Um, she said pretty much her costume, though, was, she goes, she goes, for me, none of it is high street available. And she goes, it's pretty much like mostly custom stuff. 
and things like that. So, and of course, she told us again in his in this article about you know the the pants or the color or the wallpaper that was in this guy's office. Ray Holman, if I remember right, is the guy's name. Yeah, Ray Holman. You see, I actually got it right. Yay! So, all right, Pearl Mackey appeared on the one show the other night. No, not the one show. Um, tonight, Room One Hundred One is what it was. Very sorry. So, from very nice shots of Bill, them shoes have to go. You cannot wear pink shoes with basic black. That is just outright insulting. It makes me want to get up and leave the room. Oh, sorry. Oh, God, I had a fashion moment. So, here's some exclusive images from that. If you want to look it up on your player or anything like that, boom, boom, boom. This happened the other night. All right. David Tennant. Now, this is one big compiled thing of a bunch of stuff David Tennant's already said, like the three doctors who almost met in a bookshop in Glasgow. We've already covered that before and all that. So I figured if you hadn't caught all that, this puts it all together and slams it all together into one article for you. All right. This is just a nice one I threw down there for shits and giggles. Meet the Cambridgeshire, Cambridgeshire man who has two pet Daleks. What he does with them, I don't want to know. I really don't. But it's just a nice little short piece right there. Nothing big. Okay, and this I threw on for craps and giggles. And this is seven best times they gender swap characters on TV. Not necessarily the best, but, you know, I, I, just to give you an example of some other times that, you know, this has happened on shows where characters have been, you know, flipped for, you know, for, for reasons and whatnot. Like I said, this is the one that drove me nuts was, of course, when they replaced, you know, the character of Starbuck, you know, with they you know, took, well, they made Starbuck a female character in the new Galactica. And I thought it was very appropriate that they picked an actress with the last name Sack Off. But, okay, so there we go. So very excited. We've finally gotten some photos from the, the set down on Cape, down in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, it, it appears to be well, this is an episode set in the 50s. And as you can tell from the science, like I said, it was a period of segregation in America. And like I said, not one of our brightest popular, you know, brightest moments. Uh, but uh, if only they gave me an endorsement. Uh, oh, my neck's still stiff. Oh, I'll drink more of that later. Good night, folks. Take care. Ta-ta. Enjoy the rest of your night. And beware of the clear ghost. Matter of fact, I think I'm calling her the Clara Geist.